bless the name of the Lord. He is good and his mercies endureth forever. Once again, we welcome everyone to our broadcast this morning and we trust that you had a wonderful week. You may have had ups and downs, but you're here once again joining us live um, with our broad guard and program. is being doing will continue to do in our lives and i'm sure that each and every one of us have a testimony or two since this crisis has started that the lord has been more than a conqueror more than what he says and that he is to us and so we give all, all the praise for his mercies that endures forever and ever father god we thank you for your beautiful Hallelujah. day give you all the glory and all the praise thank you jesus we thank you because of your goodness we thank, thank you, you lord. because lord that you have seen up from your throne in heaven amen look down amen. upon us and at their mercy and your grace of our to our lives and so as we open up our, ourselves thank to you, receive oh god whatever you have in store for us today amen we pray oh god that our ears will be enlightened our eyes will be opened amen. oh father god so that we can fully accept thank you your oh god of pouring the pouring of your heart into your souls today we give you all the honor we give you all the praise of father god i pray oh god that you will comfort someone who may need comforting father god reassure someone who may need that reassurance Amen. in the Amen. name of jesus as we say thank you thank you for being there with us thank you for being here with us and for continuing the journey with us father god as we open up our hearts once again to you we say thank you in the mighty name of jesus and we pray. Amen and amen. amen. It is Praise truly wonderful as I for to be part of the family of God. We've been washed uh, by his blood and we just want to give him thanks and praise. You know, this, this new arrangement sometimes restricts what I would like to do. Sometimes I want to get up and shout. Sometimes I want to dance a few things. But I'm trying to be as um, calm as I can be within the midst. But who knows? When the spirit is in you, Amen. who knows what may come out Amen. Amen. as we turn over to Sister Valerie Ambrose. Amen. Good morning again to everybody. Thanks for having me into your homes. And today our scripture reading is from Psalms 46 and we're reading from the King James Version from 1 to 11. It reads, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Amen. Therefore, will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea? Hallelujah. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, mm -hmm. though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Sila. There is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Hallelujah. The God of Jacob Amen. is our refuge. Amen. Sila. Amen. Behold, the works of the Lord, what desolation he hath made in the earth. He hath maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is so our refuge. refuge. I noticed that that was repeated <clears throat> twice, and that's not a, a mistake. The God of hosts is with us. Yes. The Lord. God of Jacob is our refuge. And it says at the end, Sila, think, stop, think about it. And when we think about the God of Jacob, in the Old Testament, it talks about the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Well, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are the same person. But we see that Abraham was more like a 
a man. He was a man of faith. He was, as it were, perfect. That's it. That's it. But Jacob, he was known to be a heel snatcher, a mm -hmm. trickster, a deceiver. Yeah. And the, so the Psalms 46 says, the God of Jacob is with us. Today, if you can affiliate with Jacob, God is your refuge and strength. At one time, Jacob was tired of being called a deceiver. Mm -hmm. And he struggled with God. And he said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Then he was blessed and his name was changed to Israel, which means contender, God contender, or God <coughs> struggles with man. Today, your name can be changed. Hallelujah. God can be your refuge Hallelujah. and your strength. And not that Jacob continued on the straight and narrow. He messed up. Yeah. But he went back to Bethel. Amen. And God Amen. again renewed him. God is a God of second chances. Amen. 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 Your Amen. refuge, your strength. If you're feeling like that today, if you feel that you need a second chance, if you feel that you need God to be your refuge and your strength, he can be today yes. in Jesus' name. Just call upon him. He says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Won't you accept him today in your life? He is a God of Jacob. Amen. That is very key. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Stop what you're doing. Stop the worrying and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst mm -hmm. the heathens. I will be exalted in all the earth. Hallelujah. Just be still. That's all Watch what's going on. All the chaos going on around you. Just be still. There's, another, there's a song that said, I will be still and know you are God. So let us demonstrate that stillness in our hearts. We need not to worry about What's coming tomorrow? We need That's not to worry it. if we don't have anything in the cupboards today because our God will be exalted amongst the heathen. He has prepared us for such a time as this. Yes, we are more than ready for this time. And so we should envelope our opportunity to serve him with all our hearts. Demonstrate to those around us who may not believe that there is a God in Israel, who may not believe there is a God of Great Britain, there is a God of the Eastern Caribbean and the God of America. There is a God in Africa. And that same God we're serving and we're crying out to him today. As we send it over to our sister from Leicester. Amen. You, Lord, my rock, forever and all my days, I will love you, God. Sing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, I just want to thank you and praise you for this privilege to sing praises once again unto your name. And for those who are listening, I just pray that you'll be blessed by this song. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Ooh. I look to you, Lord. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I and I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, 
my rock forever and all my days I will love you God God I look to you I won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things like you do I look to you where my help comes from give me wisdom you know just what to do Ooh. oh and I and I will love you Lord my strength yes I will and I will love you Lord my shield and I will love you Lord my rock forever and all my days I will love you God sing hallelujah hallelujah our God reign yes he does hallelujah our God reigns Hallelujah Our God reigns Forever and all my days Hallelujah Oh, hallelujah Hallelujah Our God reigns He reigns, He reigns Hallelujah Oh God, reign over every circumstance. Hallelujah. How God reigns forever and all my days. Hallelujah. Forever and all my days. Hallelujah. Forever and all. Right where you are today, just sing hallelujah. Our God reigns over every circumstance, over every sickness, every, over every worry, every, over every trial. Continue to trust God because he's reigning victorious over your circumstance today. Our God reigns and we sing hallelujah. Our God reigns. God bless you. Lord, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Yes, sir. Give me wisdom. <laughs> give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Mm -hmm. The other part said, give me vision. Give me vision so that we can see from your perspective. That's what the song is saying. And giving him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. We can sing that. We can say it. We can declare it boldly. Our God reigns Amen. and reigns supreme over all the earth. Amen. This is his time. Yes, sir. This is the time for him to demonstrate yes, to the doubters that there is a God. There is a God. I say alive and well. We serve a God that's alive in our hearts, alive amongst us, and alive around us. And so we just want to say thank you, Father. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you will do for us. We give you all the glory and praise for another opportunity to come into the hearts and homes of those who are watching live online, Father God. Thank you for technology to enable us to come right into the hearts of all people around the world, not just here in Birmingham, but around the country and around the entire world. There are people logging in to this program and we welcome you once again. For those of you who are just tuning in, we want to say welcome to our program and we expect something special from the voice of God when he speaks in Jesus' name. Pastor Andrews. Thank you very much, Brother Kelly, Sister Ambrose. We give the Lord thanks again to 
come into your homes, into your bedrooms, wherever you are viewing this broadcast at this moment, might be in the morning, in the evening, we welcome you and we say, to God be all the praise, to God be all the glory for the great things that he have done. Those of you who are viewing in America, in the Caribbean, I have a lovely friend over in Sheffield who is viewing the broadcast, if not this moment, Paul, Oli, we give God thanks for you. May his Holy Spirit minister to you also in Dominica. There is a young girl who said, I'm always listening, Jocelyn and her mom, Augustina, and the entire family. We bring you greetings from Birmingham, England, and all over Montserrat. We just want to give God thanks. We pray even in this time of quietness, even in this time as God speaks on visitors individually, we are trusting God today that you will make the best use of it. You'll make the best use. We have a lot of time. There were times when we had no time at all. And we are thankful that God has given us so much time. I also want to greet the members of the Praise and Fellowship Christian Center. We are located 199 Willow Street in Newton. To all our members, we say to God be the glory and trust that you are trusting God. The elders and all the ministers out there, the young people, stay in tune with God. We are trusting God that when we return, we're going to have a mighty explosion. And God would continue to reign supremely at the prison. And Fellowship Christian Center. And those of you who don't have a place of worship, we are inviting you to visit us. Our services is at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. And we welcome you that you will pass by when everything returns, you know, back to normal. So we give the Lord thanks today. Heavenly Father, we honor you and we thank you, Lord, for your word. We ask today, Father, as your word go forth, that some souls would cry out to you in repentance. Father, those who are saved already, they would be strengthened. Those who are grieving again, Father, we commit them into your hands. Maybe they have lost a loved one. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, for that man who has lost a wife, a wife who has lost a husband, or have lost, O oh Lord, a daughter or son. Lord, we just lift them before you even now. Amen. We pray that your grace, O oh Lord, would uphold them in this difficult time. Yes. Master, as they continue to grieve, we pray that they would look to you. Bring comfort and bring peace, O oh Lord, even in this difficult time. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way as we continue to look to you. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You know, throughout this week, I've been thinking of the verse that is found in Psalms 144 and verse 3, where David penned those words. What is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, man can be very boastful. And sometimes the way that men behave is like their life belongs to them. You know, with their private jets and their expensive motor cars. And, you know, it goes on and on. And their bachelor degree and oh, master of science and all the rest of it. And... You wonder, you know, what is man? What is man? It, it, it. Job says, man that is born of a woman is but a few days. And the question is, when we think of man, do you know that we are just dust? We are earth. You know, we, we, we came from the earth and we shall return to the earth. And sir, so, 
Madam, the breath that you are now breathing, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God who lent it to you just for a little while. Amen. You, you, the breath that you now have is not yours. And God breathed into man. God has given you the breath. And at the moment of time, he said to you, I want to minister to you. I, I want to speak to you. That's the reason why I have shut you in. I, I have given you time. And now is the opportunity that you can sit down. Now is not the time to be in, in drunkenness and, you know, enjoying the pleasures while you are at home. And it appears that drunkenness is getting to the level where people realize, well, I can't go out, I can't drive. So I will make sure that uh, I have as much alcohol as possible. I say to you today, stop destroying the temple that God has given to you. Present it to him as a living sacrifice. You must understand that God is not a God of convenience. You know, we are living in a world of convenience. Everything is at our fingertip. No more do we need to go to the supermarkets to do any shopping. At the click of a button, you know, you could get whatever you want and you name it. The, your car now has television and it has sat nav. We are in a world of convenience. I want to say to you that God is not a God just for your convenience when you want him. And that is exactly what is happening at this very present moment. Many people, all they are wishing for is for this time the season to pass by that we can return to our normal way of life but i am trusting god today that even after the season has come to an end we are going to see men and women who have truly been changed men and women who have decided enough is enough and i realize that god have spared my life and we look around and so many people sometimes when I listen to the news, I say, my God, the amount of people that is passing, you know, on. And we ask ourselves, will I be next? And even sometimes when you ask yourself, would I be next? You, you, you are not thinking deeper. The question is, if I am next, am I prepared? Am I ready to meet my God? I pray today that as God speaks to us, that we would recognize that we need him more than ever before. Amen. Last week we were looking at the topic, what to do when you don't know what to do. And I just want to continue from where I left off. And our scripture was taken from the book of 2 Corinthians. Um, Chronicles and it was King Jehoshaphat who was in a situation where he didn't know what to do. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 10 this is what it says and now behold the children of Ammon, Moab and Monsia whom thou would have not let Israel invade the land of Egypt, but they turned from him and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us and take away our possessions which thou hast given to us to inherit. And verse 12 says, O our God, Will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but the eyes of the Lord are upon thee. And Judah stood before the Lord with the little ones and with their children. What a terrible situation to be in. And 
A few of the things that we discovered last week is that Jehoshaphat, he encountered the problem of being invaded. And the armies were on the way. And as Jehoshaphat stood and said, Lord, we don't know what to do. The problem that he encountered is that he was looking at the multitude. And when you look at the multitude, when you, when you put, when you take your eyes of God and you look at your physical problem, what you find is going to happen, stress, are going to take a hold of you. Whenever someone takes the eyes of God, you are going to encounter stress and fear is going to set in. But we are thankful today that God's message was assuring to Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat said, we don't know what to do. And the thing about it, all Jehoshaphat had to do was to follow directions. And God delivered him. Today God is saying to you, you need to follow my instruction. You need to do as you are told. And ladies and gentlemen, the number one thing for the world today, yes, at the moment, we are all seeking for, you know, a cure for this virus. But ladies and gentlemen, God is saying the time has come that men need to repent and turn to God. It might not match up, you know, and, and, and if you don't know, if you don't have a knowledge of God, you might say, what am I saying? I said to us today again, God is saying to the world, stop a while, recognize me as God, recognize that I am speaking to the world through pandemic, and I am saying to the world, it is time for change. It is time for change. Today, we want to look at two other characters. In the book of Second Kings, hallelujah, in the book of Kings, we are going to see that God spoke to a prophet by the name of Elijah. First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. And we are going to see when God speaks how much men need to listen. We are going to see this morning that it was a difficult situation. But God worked things out. God already had everything planned out. And today, those of you who are out there, I know that you are concerned. And yes, we should be concerned. We, we should be concerned. We should listen to the authorities. If they say, stay in, let's try our best. We have to go out. We don't need to go joyriding. And, you know, let's do as we are told. Let's do. Let's listen to the scientists and the medical professionals. Let us adhere to what they are saying. But it's also important that we also understand that God is saying to this nation that you need to understand I am in control. I have everything in control. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, no one is immune from trouble. And I don't care who you are. You could be the king, the queen, the president, the prince. It doesn't matter who you are. No one is immune from troubles. Troubles of stress. Feeling unsecured and the worries. And may I say to us today that the troubles of life is part 
of the human makeup. It is, it is part of life. As a matter of fact, Job penned those words many centuries ago in Job chapter 14. He says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower. He cometh forth like a flower. And soon he is cut down. My God. And the cut down there is death. Ladies and gentlemen, we must understand that we are only passing through. Yeah. Earth is like transit. Yeah. When we are traveling and, you know, we are in transit, we, we, we don't want to get too comfortable. Because if you get too comfortable in transit, there is a possibility of you losing your flight. So in other words, when you are in transit, you, you are on the lookout. You, you are very alert. You, you, you are looking at the, you know, the television monitors because you, you are checking your flight number and you are checking what gate that you have to enter. It's very important. So you don't want to be too comfortable in transit. And that is the problem with many people in the world today. What has happened? People have made themselves so comfortable in the world today that they have forgotten that you they are moving on. Yeah. You are moving on. Yeah. You are not there for eternity, but you are just passing through. And our wealth and our possessions and our education and the economy economy we tend to put all of that before our very souls and at the end of it brothers and sisters when we get to the point where we are so comfortable we forget about god but no one is immune no one is immune and may i go on to say to you if you have never encountered your day of trouble it is on the way. Your day of trouble is on the way. I am not a prophet. But I am saying to you, you are not immune. As a matter of fact, as a little boy growing up back home, there we, we had a saying that we normally says, every pig has its Saturday. In other words, I remember growing up as a little boy, Farmers used to come from the country, you know, with their piglets. There was a spot in the market where they would take the piglets and people would come and buy the piglets. And what it simply means, if you know you're a farmer and you pick your piglets, uh, next Saturday you're going to take some more. So in other words, every pig has its Saturday. And I say the very same thing to you, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, your day of, uh, your, 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 your appointed time is on its way. You might die through this virus, but I say to you, your day is coming. The day is coming when you are going to stand before God. One day, it will be you and God. It will be you and God. And may I say to you, what are you going to do when you stand before an almighty God? Our two characters we are looking at today is a widow and a prophet. One had a little to survive for one day. The other had nothing but wanted a little from what the widow had. <laughs> yeah. My God. The difference between the two, one knew Jehovah, Jehovah, the other had lost hope and was thinking of death. Our Bible tells us in the book of First Kings, chapter 17. The Bible tells us, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, that is Elijah, Get the hands and turn eastwards, and hide thyself by the brook, by the brook Cherith, which is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and have commanded the ravens to feed thee. 
So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. And the ravens brought for bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he had come to the gate of the city, behold, the woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a muscle of bread in thine hands. And he said, As the Lord God liveth. She said, as, And she said, Verse 12, sorry, And as the Lord liveth, I have not but a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, <laughs> and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in dress it, me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but first make me a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make thee one for thy son, my God. What we observe, church, in this couple verses that we have read today is that the widow had a son. It was a time of famine. It was a time of hard time. Everyone was involved. Everyone was included. My God. And doesn't that tell us something of the time that we are now in, the situation we are now in? No one is immune. Yeah. No one is excluded. The prophet was included. The widow was included. Yes. Because the drought was going into the third year. Going into the third year. The poor was hurt. The wealthy was hurt. But one of the things that we observe, brothers and sisters, in spite of the hard times that they were experiencing, we observe that Elijah, he still had trust and faith in God. May I say to you today, at this very present moment, it appears that we are losing hope and we are losing faith. And as we view the news day after day and we wonder when will it end. And maybe many of you, you are beginning to doubt God. You are beginning to curse God. You, 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 you are in the position where you are speaking like, like, like Job's wife and you are saying curse God. God and die because God is not love. God is not real. Why so many people have their lives been cut short my God and we begin to question God and we begin to question you know where is God? But what we observe in spite of the situation that Elijah his faith in God was rooted. Church now is the time that you are going to prove your faith. Yes. Now is the time that you are going to prove God. Those of you who have been in church and believers, those of you who, who went to Bible study night after night, week after week, years after years, now you are on a test. And the test is, are you going to survive this time? Or are you going to fall away? 
Is your faith going to be weakened? You are now on a test. And the test is God is saying all of these years that you, you, you have listened to the word. You have practiced Christianity. Are you going to allow the drought and the season of death that we are now encountering? Are you going to allow your faith to be weakened? What we observe, Elijah, his faith in God was absolute. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The widow, the Bible tells us, the widow, she was preparing for death. She was thinking of death. As a matter of fact, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. This is what she said, and he arose and went to Zephyr, and there met he a woman, and she was gathering sticks. She was gathering sticks to have her final meal. Hope was lost. May I ask you today, do you still have hope in God? Do you still have trust in God? In spite of the situation, my condolences to many of you who has lost loved ones. Yes. Yeah. Those of you who have lost loved ones, I grieve with you. But may I ask you, losing your loved one, have that resulted in your faith being weakened? Are you now in a situation, in a position where you are now denying God? Where you are saying that God is not real? Ladies and gentlemen, all the things that we must understand, like I said, we are not here forever. We are only passing through. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 tells us it is an appointment. Yeah. And do you know from creation, I believe, you know, if we should picture the whole thing, God has a book and he has a date when he is, every man is going to die. And maybe, you know, when God, when, 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 when God, you know, organized the book, God says, all right, a hundred and, 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 you know, so much thousands of people are going to die in, 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 in 2020 within a month. Because it's an appointed time. It is an appointed time. But the thing about it, whenever someone dies, the usual reaction of the human is that we are going to grieve. And I understand, and I say to you, if your loved one has died, your, 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 you know, your mother, your father, your wife, I say to you, cry. Nothing wrong with crying. As a matter of fact, crying is healthy. But may I say to you, Maybe their appointed time has come. Sometimes, you know, we call on the elders and we call on, 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 on people who know God to pray. Yes, that's our, our privilege to pray. But sometimes, even, even when we pray, God still allows that person not to live. Because it is their appointed time. It is their appointed time. It is appointed unto man. And we all have an appointment. We all have an appointment. But we observe that the woman, she was just preparing for death. She said, there is no more hope. I have nothing left. All I have left is a little, a little meal and a little oil. And we are going to make our final cake. And we are going to eat it. And we are going to die. Are you thinking of death? Have you given up hope? I say to you under the sound of our voice today that God is saying to you, don't be like that widow, but keep hope alive. I say to you today, in spite of the situation, God has everything under control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a hard time. Number two, God was making provisions for the widow, for Elijah, and her son, the widow's son. In spite of the hard time, God 
had everything organized. God was making provisions for them. My God. God had everything in control. And as a matter of fact, 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 7 tells us, listen to what it says. And it came to pass after a while the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Ladies and gentlemen today, maybe you are there at the moment. You are not sure how you are going to pay your rent. You, 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 you are not sure where the next meal might be coming from. But I want to say to you, God is thinking of you. God is making provisions for you. And my word of comfort to you today is take comfort. Take comfort. Take comfort. Elijah was at the brook and he was enjoying life. The man was sleeping. As a matter of fact, it's like the same thing. He was locked in. Thank God we are locked in, but we have television. We have our telephones. We have our tablets. You know, we, we still have comfort. We have our refrigerator. Many of you, your, your fridge is packed to the brim. But Elijah was locked in just in a cave with absolutely nothing, nothing to depend on. All Elijah could depend on was ravens. My God. All the man had to do was to rely on an unclean bird to bring forth his meals. That's all the man could rely on. But we thank God. We thank God that God used an unclean bird to feed Elijah. Isn't that God, a mighty God, God uses whomsoever he will. He uses whomsoever. Many of us thought that God would have used a dove. But no, 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 no. God used a raven, an unclean animal to sustain Elijah in the cave. The man was locked in a cave, but God was making provisions for him. I said to you today, those of you who are worried, and those of you who are in distress, and those of you who are thinking of death, God is saying to you, fear not. God is saying to you, I am thinking of you. I have already made provisions for you. I have already made provisions for you. Yeah. Yes, sir, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man received his meals on wheels. Hallelujah. When your sauce dries up, what do you do? And what God had to do, maybe Elijah came to the point where he was so comfortable that God had to take away the comfort in order that he would depend totally and even more on God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The birds, the raven didn't come anymore. <laughs> the brook dried up. Yeah. And what God is doing to us today, he has taken away many of the comforts, the things that we rely and depend on. God is saying, I am taking it away that you would recognize I am the source of life. I am the one that, 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 that gives and I am the one who takes it. God is saying, I am the source of life. So all of the things that brought us joy and comfort, my God, God is saying to us today, I have taken, literally taken it away that I could get your attention. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The widow had nothing. On the other hand, the widow had nothing. Hallelujah. But God is able to take care of her when all you have is God. When you have all, when you have nothing left, sorry, God is all you have. You have everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is all you need. Yeah. When it appears that everything has dried up, well, you have God. You have that confidence that God is able. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Hallelujah. The widow, everything she had 
was almost gone. But listen to, listen to God. Listen to God. Listen to what God is saying. You see, brothers and sisters, God is always one step ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And maybe at this moment, you are worried. You are thinking about death. You are thinking about your job after everything is over. Man, come on. Don't you worry about the future. You don't know about the future. Leave the future to God. Enjoy today. Once you have life, you will survive. Hallelujah. You will survive because God is one step ahead. God is one step ahead. I want to prove to you where God is one step ahead. Look at chapter 17 and verse 5. Chapter 17 and verse 5. The Bible tells us, So he did according to the word of the Lord. And he went on and dwelt by the brook Cherif, that is before Jordan. And the ravens came. Hallelujah. The ravens came. God had already prepared for Elijah what he was worrying about. Chapter 17 and verse 9. This is what it says. Arise and get thee to Zarephath. Which belongs to Zidon and Bethia. Behold, I have commanded. I have commanded. Yeah. A widow to feed thee. Yes. And even before. That. Look at verse 4 again. The very same thing. And it shall be. Thou shalt drink of the brook. For I have commanded a raven to feed thee. You see church. God already had everything planned for Elijah. Hallelujah. And God is the one who commands. He is the one who is in command of the storms. He is the one who is in command of the pandemic. He is the one who is in com control of the things that we tend to worry about. The brook dried up. What is your brook today? What is your brook today? What is your brook today? Is it prosperity? What, what are you depending on that you cannot let go? May I say to you that everything that happens in this life, God is all in the planet. And as I close today, at the final point I want to bring home to us is that you need to put God first. When you don't know what to do, you need to put God first. The Bible tells us that this is Elijah and the woman. She has a little meal, uh, a little bit of flour and oil. Oh my God. But the Bible tells us, Elijah said unto her, Bake me a cake. And look at the little words in verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, chapter 17, verse 13, look at it. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou art told. And bake me a little cake first. Can you imagine? And then bake one for your son. How many of us would take Elijah at his word? Bake me one first. The first thing would come to our mind, charity begins at home. Uh-huh. Charity begins at home. I heard the president of the United States says, you know, we cannot have any, any foreign workers at this moment because we need to look firstly at those who are unemployed in the United States. And I understand what he's trying to say. Brothers and sisters, God is so different. God, God says, you are, if you put me first, seek ye first my kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. It is very difficult to put God first. It is very difficult. Putting God first is a sacrifice. Putting God first calls for obedience. Putting God first calls for commitment. But you see, brothers and sisters, when we learn to put God first, things will work out for us. The widow, she had a choice. She could have said, no, no, no. Elijah, you're joking. 
You mean bake a cake for you first? For you first? Then what that is left? My son Elijah know. The widow had a choice. Either to eat her cake and die. Or trust God. What are you going to do today? What are you going to do today? Are you going to put God first? Or are you going to continue in your own way? The important thing when you put God first, you have that assurance that God will work things out for you. And brothers and sisters, I plead today and I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would minister to us what to do when you don't know what to do. I want to pray for somebody today. Those of you who never had a relationship with God, you, you, you have never, you know, come to the realization that I need God. Those of you who, who, who have never realized that earth is only transit and, and, and all of the things that seems to be bringing pleasure, you know, the sex and the, 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 the material things and the pleasure and oh, you just name it and the drugs. It's bringing pleasure. But you have not experienced the fullness of God. If not as you were sitting in your sitting room, in your bedroom, lying on your bed, wherever you are viewing this broadcast even now. I said to you, now is God's time. Now is God's time. God has given you an opportunity and God is saying, turn to me. Do you know that you could have already been worn in, this, in, 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 in the multitude of people who have passed on? But no. You are still there. Yeah. You are still there. You, 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 you could have been Going in the grave, but God has given you another opportunity. Shall I invite you to Christ today? Shall I ask you, turn to God. He's depending on you. And if you are willing today, just repeat those simple words. Heavenly Father, I come to you. I recognize I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I ask you now to come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me. I repent. I repent. And I promise you that I will serve you and I will live for you. In Jesus' name. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have said this prayer, I trust that God will just minister to you. If you need any help, feel free to call me. 79 Double eight four two seven six two zero, and I guarantee you, I will spend time with you in the Word, leading you and giving you a deeper knowledge of the things of God. So may God minister to you, even when you don't know what to do. God is saying, "Put me first." And the Bible tells us after the widow put God first, she 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 obeyed God. The Bible says that she had oil and. And, 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 and milk and it never ran out until the drought was over it's good to obey God it's good to listen to God you cannot go wrong when you trust God may he minister to you in Jesus name Sister Amen Amen, praise God you can trust God in every circumstance so be still and know that I am God are you going to not trust him and die? Or are you going to obey and live? God is waiting for you to make the first move. Amen. To obey him and live. May God bless you this week. And may he teach you how to trust him. Hallelujah. Over to Brother Kevin. And thank you very much. What an important word. Um, what to do. When you don't know what to do. Yes, sir. And I'll tell you what to do when you don't know what to do. Look to God. Amen. Look for God. Amen. Because that He's the only Hallelujah. only source that you need. Yes, sir. Not at the television, not at the newspapers, but look to God. Because He will sustain you in this time. A couple of things just before we close, I'd like to mention in this passage of scripture. I, I there's a, a famous saying, How can you have your cake and eat it? <laughs> And she had her cake. That's it. Waited for her to eat it. But she couldn't eat her cake. 
You could understand, but now I understand why people say, Yes, sir. How could you have your cake and eat it? Do you want to have your cake and eat it? This is a powerful, powerful way of demonstrating how God is. Now, easily, flesh would say, I'm crazy, you're crazy. Yes, you sir. must eat before me, so you need me say that I don't even have much for the two of us. But she believed. What to do? She believed. What to do? She trusted. Amen. What to do? She obeyed. Okay. And that is what you need to do. To Amen. obey. And one final point. Some of us, as Pastor was mentioning, the fridges are overflowing. The cupboards. Mm -hmm. Some tins are in there rusty. But this lady had flour. Yes, sir. And oil. But was able to bake a cake. Where the other parts of the ingredients come? Where is the egg, for example? It's a long time ago that veganism was, was, was going on. Because there was no mention of an egg. There was no mention of anything. But a piece, uh, some oil and flour. And that can make you something. So if you're in need, I want to say this. If you're in need today, uh, I can't um, remember Pastor's number as he can, because he's his own number anyway. But please call him. Call up Sister Val. For those of you who praise and fellowship Christian Center members, we can deal with confidentiality. That's part of our, of, of our resource. That we deal with every case confidentially. If you're in need, or your neighbor might be in need, please call us up. Also, if you need prayer, once again, I think next week we'll have the number across the screen so that we, you can call in for prayer. And Pastor, if you want to repeat the number again, you're very good at, your, your memory is very good, yes. Even as you uh, turn closer to 60, you still can remember things. Let's get the number, Pastor. 079-884-276-20. That, that is 079-884-276-20. We bless the Lord at this time. We really, truly bless Him. And a powerful word indeed. And we pray that we we'll meditate on this, not only throughout today, but for the rest of the week. That your God that you serve is an awesome and powerful God. And we once again want to thank you for joining us. And um, I've been meaning to, um, in, in my effort to try and get the service wrapped up very quickly, uh, because of time, I was, I was meaning to encourage everyone who, um, obviously those of you who are going to the shops, those of you who have to work, that take every precaution necessary when you go there. Mm -hmm. um, I, very early on, I used to see the folks with their masks, and so I didn't think that I would be one who's wearing. But when you have people who are concerned, always calling in to make sure and saying, you know, be careful out there. You, you can't take any chance. Yes, you are covered under the blood, but be, be mindful as well. Be wise. Yeah. They're evil out there. Use the antibacterial on the outside, not on the inside, as someone has suggested. Um, and also use the wipes, wash your hands, wear your mask if possible. Please be safe. And we want to encourage you again to cover yourself underneath the blood of Jesus. You already have been covered, but don't take it for granted. Cover yourself, cover your children, your neighbors. Cover the other members of the church and the other members of that who is, who is not present in your home as well. Cover us all. Some of us still have to go to work. Cover us. Yeah. We um, solicit your prayers and covering as we go out to serve the folks there. Even everyone who is still working, the NHS, the police, everybody was there doing essential work, yeah. putting their lives at risk. Yeah. Cover them in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm going to turn back to Sister Val to close us in prayer. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you because you are God that is beautiful Hallelujah. every situation Amen. and we do thank you today that we can trust you you said to call upon you and you will hear you said knock and you will open so we are calling you. upon you oh god we remember oh god our nhs workers or yes. uh, the frontline staff oh yes. god remember our providers oh father yes. in the care homes yes. dear lord they don't know what to do but oh god we pray that they will Amen. look up unto you. From whence cometh our help? Our help comes from the Lord, Amen. which made heaven and earth. Father, oh God, we thank you Amen. because your eyes are upon us thank as you, our Jesus. eyes are upon you. Thank oh you. God, come to our help, Lord Amen. Jesus. And we thank you that you move with the very feelings of our infirmities. You know what's going on. Oh God. You're not a forgetful God, and we thank you. We thank you. Yes. Bless our people, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Again, we say thank you for listening in, and have a good week. Stay safe. 
In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you.